These next few steps will show you how to remove the radiator out of a Model A Ford. So up until now, let's summarize what we've done so far. So we've removed the hood, took the hood off from the vehicle. The radiator support rods, there's two of these. Uh, we removed these so that we can take out the radiator. We also removed all the radiator hoses. So took, there's a top hose and bottom hoses, so we removed all the hoses. So at, that's, at this point, you'll see when you have the hoses and the radiator support rods removed, the radiator will tilt back and forth. The only thing holding the radiator at this point in the Model A are two bolts in the bottom, and we'll proceed to take those out after we take a few things off first. So to remove the Model A radiator at this point, it's not too much more work. You've probably done most of the work at this point. Uh, remove the cap. You'll also remove all the electrical wiring in the front. So there's conduits here that you run wires for the headlights and one for the horn. You'll want to remove those. You'll also want to remove this uh, shell or cowl on the outside of the radiator. There's four bolts that hold that in, two on each side. They're on the inside of the radiator. I'll show you where those are in a second. You also might want to, there's a crossbar member in front of the radiator. You might want to wrap that with a towel or something soft as you're working to pull the radiator out so it doesn't scratch or dent. Uh, what else is worth noting? And it may be worthwhile as you're taking things apart on your radiator that you'll see this lining around the shell or the cowl that's uh, a fabric material. It's used to protect when the hood sits on the top, it keeps the hood from rubbing against the metal of the radiator. If that's worn out or deteriorated on your car, it's probably worth replacing. There's small little rivets that hold it in place. Uh, it's pretty cheap to buy a new strip and put it around the radiator shell. So if you, uh, mine's a few years old, so it's not that old. But if yours is older or it needs replacement, now's a good time to do that. I will show you where those uh, for the radiator shell. So inside there's a, there's one here top. There's also one here in the bottom. And on the other side of the radiator same thing. There's one up top there and then one down there below on the bottom. So you will remove those four to take the radiator shell or cowl out. And then there's the two bolts on the bottom you'll do last. Um, I don't know if I can videotape those right now, but um, if I get a chance to, if I get a chance, I will. So those are the next steps to remove the radiator out of the Model A. Little tricks to note as you're removing the wiring harness as part of removing the radiator from the Model A. The uh, connections, the conduits for the headlights are pretty straightforward. You basically detach these from the headlamp shells and pull the wires through. The wires will basically be kind of a three colored uh, red, yellow, green. It's pretty easy to remove those. The horn is a little tricky, not too bad. You have to take the back part of the horn off. There's one screw that holds it in. And just so you know, uh, the two wires, these actually push in. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this or not, but in under here there's one that goes on the right and the left and you just take these ends uh, mine happens to be yellow on the left and blue on the right if you're facing forward but they just you just pull them out from each end and then you can pull these wires through the conduit to remove them another piece of advice it's also worth noting when you're removing the bottom screws from the radiator shell so this screw here that goes in the bottom uh, you're not you're gonna need a short screwdriver so either a very short flat head like this or like an S curve screwdriver a regular size screwdriver won't there's not enough room between the fender and the screw when you're trying to unscrew this out uh, to get a hold on it so that's just something to keep in mind as you're working on this project so make sure you have that handy okay once you removed the four screws holding in the radiator shell and you've disconnected all the uh, 
wiring harness connections to the lights and horn. You're ready to remove the radiator shell or cowl, which I will do now. Uh, the hardest part will be getting it over this neck, the cap. So just, uh, it's rather loose. Make sure you pull all the conduits all the way out as far as they'll go. They won't come out, they'll just come to the end. Uh, get your fingers under here. Make sure you have something to protect the front. It should just slowly come up. And then make sure you have a flat, clean place to lay it down, which I do over here. Alright. Now this will make it easier to get to the screws on each side. Uh, let me disconnect the camera and show you that. So now... That's one of the bolts holding in the radiator on the driver's side and on the passenger side. Now you can easily get to those. Uh, there's cotter pins, you remove them, unscrew them, and then pull them out from the bottom. And that will be the next step before we remove the radiator itself. Okay, this is the final stage. We're going to remove the radiator from the Model A. Uh, last step, there are once you remove these mounting bolts in the bottom that hold it in place, the lip, there's a, you can see before you take it out, you have to kind of tilt or turn the radiator a bit to get it out because it's designed to fit under these two front fenders a little, well let me just show you when I take it out. So you lift up slightly and you turn it and you can see the little plates. Once I get one end out, I can get the other end out. And, uh, oh, my hose is still on there. Okay, let me... Uh. Alright. So you can do this by yourself. It's probably better with two people. Uh, I forgot to remove. You can see there's one, uh, that radiator hose I forgot to remove, but got everything out okay. Put this on a flat, safe place. And then... Have your radiator work done, you need done, and then put it back. Okay, this part, I guess, is optional for the Model A radiator replacement, but I want to show you how to do a flow test on a Model A radiator. So basically what this test will be is we will fill up the radiator with water and then drain it, and we see how long it takes for the entire radiator to drain the complete contents of fluid. The literature says it should be about four seconds. If it's much longer than that, then your radiator needs to be cleaned or serviced, possibly even have some repair work done if it's really clogged. Uh, there's also a capacity check as well. So if you block the ends of your radiator and fill it up with liquid, such as water, it should take about a gallon and a half, uh, maybe a little less. If your capacity is much less than a gallon and a half, you could also have issues with your radiator as well. So what I did to stop up, uh, let me show you here. It says from what I read to use a rubber ball, but I don't know where, you know, those aren't easy to come by. So what I did was I took a plastic bag. This is a Ziploc freezer bag, but you could use any kind of plastic that's heavy duty, like a shopping bag or something. And I took the hose clamp and just put that around the upper neck of the radiator to put a seal there. It's mostly tight. Then for the bottom, I'm just using a tennis ball. So it'll leak a little bit as I fill it up, but it'll hold pretty much hold the water in there as I put pressure on it. And then it's easy for me to just let go of that tennis ball and then see how long it takes for the radiator to drain all the water. So let's go ahead and show you what that looks like now. You'll have to wait a few minutes for me to fill it up. Okay, here we go. Hose. If you want to use a container to fill up with water, that will do as well. Hold the bottom of 
the outlet with a tennis ball. Okay, I put a towel on the bottom so it won't scratch the radiator. Just simply fill it up. So make sure you got most of it. Okay, here we go. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand, eleven, one thousand, twelve, one thousand. So I'm over twelve already. There's still just a little bit coming out, but uh, all this water should have drained out in four seconds. Uh, I've got twelve seconds. I didn't have it quite filled up all the way to the top. Again, you get it close to the top above the baffle, you should be fine. It doesn't have to be all the way to the top. But clearly, 12 seconds to drain the radiator of water versus 4 seconds, which is recommended. Uh, there's some work that needs to be done. So I'm going to take this to a radiator shop and have it serviced. Hopefully it's nothing major, but we'll find out. Also, for capacity check, I'm not going to do that, but this is exactly one gallon of water. You can find gallon containers around your house anywhere beverages this happens to be a vinegar container so you can stop the bottom of your radiator put in a gallon and a half see how much your radiator holds if it close if you can hold about a gallon and a half that's considered the capacity of a model a radiator if it holds about a gallon and not much more then you have some blockage in your radiator you need to address Okay, we are now picking up the spot where uh, this is the radiator to a Model A Ford. It has been returned from the radiator shop. It has been uh, rotted out, boiled, clean, and pressure tested. And so what I'm going to show you now is how the water flow, uh, once I fill up the radiator and let the water out, it'll flow much faster than it did before. So remember in the previous video clip. Uh, it took about 12 seconds to drain the radiator, which is uh, indicates it's very clogged. It should take about 4 seconds according to the Model A documentation that's out there. So again, just to recap what we're going to do is for the top part, I have a hose clamp on a plastic bag. So it won't be seal proof, but enough to keep the water in there as I fill up the top with a hose. And the bottom I'm going to have a tennis ball and just plug the bottom there as I fill it up with water. Now unfortunately I couldn't, I couldn't find a clever way to fill it up before I started the video so you'll have to watch me fill it up real quick as we go. So I'll do that real quick and let's hope, I haven't tried this yet so I hope it all drains out in four seconds. If not I have to take it back to the radiator shop. But I'm going to hope they did a good job. Okay, block the bottom and put water in the top. Seven. So that's a small stream out of there, but really, after four or five seconds, most of it came out. There'll there'll still be. It'll take forever for all the water to drain out. But if you remember from the last video clip, uh, the water rushes out, drains out much better now that it's been re-rotted from before. So it did a good job. I think the majority of the water came out in the four-second window, and now it's ready to go back into the car. Okay, this is the f stage of putting the radiator back into the Model A. So uh, let me show you a few things real quick. Right now I just have it barely in there to 
run the engine only. There's no hood on the Model A yet. Uh, you don't put the hood back on until you fill it up with water. Make sure everything's running and you have no leaks because taking the hood on and off the Model A is very challenging by yourself. Uh, let me point out real quick. You'll assemble the radiator back in on each side, the left and right hand side. You'll see one bolt there, a mounting bolt in the bottom, the other mounting bolt right there. You'll start with those two and then you'll put the hoses on next. This is a good time to put brand new hoses on the Model A. That's a new hose. You don't want to, if your hoses look slightly cracked, old hoses are cheap and it's hard to get at these things when it's all bolted together. So this is a good time if you're doing any radiator work to just go ahead and put all new hoses on. Can't go wrong. After um, you want to put the top hose on You'll apply a little bit of grease on each of these ends to make it slide in better. Not a lot of grease, just a little bit, so it'll slide in. Uh, these two rods that hold the radiator in place that connect to the body of the Model A, you'll put these on after all the hoses are connected, and then you'll tighten down all the hose clamps. These hose clamps here, here. Then you'll fill up your radiator with water and run your engine to make sure uh, to check for any leaks and I did find a few leaks so um, let me go through they're not in the radiator thank goodness because that's the work was done uh, one thing I forgot and you need to make sure you remember to do this this is why you're watching my videotapes so you can learn all my tricks this is an overflow hose so your radiator the Model A has this little if you can see this tube right here this tube comes down and it's an overflow for when um, the water bubbles up, and that's not uncommon now, then depending how much water you have in there. And I attach this rubber hose on the bottom to direct the water away from the engine and the rest of the body. I forgot to put that on there. It's almost impossible to put this back on, at least in my car, afterwards. So I'm going to have to basically take everything apart, put this hose back on. Uh, so that was an expensive lesson to learn. Uh, just expense and time, not material. You'll see what happens if you look. Let me see if I can get in here. Uh, you'll see some liquid accumulate in the bottom there. It's a little bit green color because I put some uh, antifreeze mixed in with my uh, water. Use distilled water if you can. Distilled water mixed with antifreeze. That's what happens with the overflow here. Is like this will drain in the bottom there. And with that hose in place, it won't drain in there. You'll notice for any leaks, uh, for the most part, I don't really have any leaks. There's one part here. If you look right there, again, the green colored liquid. I did spot some coolant fluid there. So you can trace back up. I basically traced it back up to, let's go over here real quick. And this was, a, I guess, a new leak. It's coming from, a, this is a, supposed to be a leakless pump, but this thing here is leaking some fluid so I need to look at that later and see why it's leaking hopefully uh, that's not a big deal to fix and I can um, take care of that the hoses weren't leaking at all which was great it was a long time since my last video that I shot this video uh, I will say I'm a little embarrassed how long it's been but the good news is a Model A can sit for a very long time and uh, start right up but I don't recommend you let your Model A sit for periods of time when you have it apart. One piece of advice is to keep your battery charged. I have, I found, I had an old battery charger which died. I bought this new one that's pretty good. Make sure it can handle both 6 and 12 volt because a Model A battery is 6 volt. Uh, this is a good little unit. I had an old Schumacher before so they make a pretty good battery charger. This one's all more digital now. It's it's microprocessor driven, so it's more modern, but it does the job. It'll charge my battery. Um, if you're going to store your Model A for a long time, make sure you use some stabilizer in your fuel. And for antifreeze, it's recommended to use something that doesn't bubble. This, uh, this Sierra, there's also similar types of uh, antifreeze. You don't want to use regular antifreeze if you can. This is a different kind. It's made out of... Uh, 
propylene glycol versus the other one. I forgot the other one. But anyway, this is supposed to be, uh, for Model A's, it's supposed to be better um, because it doesn't bubble over so easy. And it also makes it easier when it's green colored. You can see the little spot areas where you might have leaks and you'll check. So overall, I was very pleased that the car started right up when I put everything together. I will have to uh, drain the fluid to put that little hose back on the bottom of the overflow tube. That's not a big deal because I have a bucket. You just drain, you can drain all your coolant fluid into a bucket, then just pour it back in later. And you probably want to see it running just to see how it looks. So uh, yes, let me stop this and start it again for you. And there it is running. So again, it sat for a long time, um, very long time, and it started right up, which was good. So check your areas for potential leaks. Check here by the drain plug. Check here, check here. When you fill up your Model A with fluid, um, you want to fill it so the water is like right above the baffle, but not too high. And uh, again, be careful with moving parts. Don't put your fingers anywhere, they might get bit. Uh, also, don't put the hood on until everything checks out okay. And make sure your battery terminals are all good. I actually ended up getting a new battery, but here's a six volt battery for the Model A. So make sure your connections are good. Keep them clean and shiny. Put a little grease on them if you need to. Make sure the liquid levels in your battery are all okay. So uh, I'm going to declare my radiator project a success. Uh, I'll probably take one more video with everything back together. I got to do a few more things uh, to make sure it's all a-okay 100%. But so far things look good. Okay, this is continuing the Model A radiator repair uh, in my previous video clips I had put the radiator in the Model A after it came back from the shop and I noticed I forgot one important thing so make sure when you do this project you don't make the same mistake I do uh, this is the overflow tube so for the radiator this tube it's hard to see because it's also black comes along here uh, this is the overflow tube and unfortunately from the manufacturer uh, it was designed to come just to the very bottom here but what you're going to want to do is put an extra rubber hose attachment this is just a pretty standard vacuum tube you can get at any automotive store but you definitely want to put this tube on the end of the overflow tube here and you want to put a zip lock on it so you want to put a cable tie on it and uh, tighten that down and then clip it off when you're done because what's going to happen is without this every time you have any kind of overflow of radiator fluid, coolant fluid uh, it's going to mess up all the... <laughs> it's going to get everywhere and be messy so what this extension does, this vacuum, uh, this rubber hose does is it just when it overflows it gets it away from the body of the Model A so it goes more towards the pavement, the road instead of on your car if you forget to do this while you're putting it together, there's really no way when it's assembled to get up under the car and put this on. You really have to assemble it while the radiator is out. So another good reason why you don't put the hood on the Model A until everything is working okay with the radiator. So that's a good tip. Okay, and the last I will follow up on putting this tube on the end of the overflow for the Model A for the radiator. There's a hole in the frame in the front here so you can see this hole right here is cut in, it's round and when you're putting the radiator back in just be sure that the tube that you guide it through that hole as you're putting it back together and it should come out on the bottom. So see there? You can see the tube hanging from the bottom of the Model A, which means you've successfully put it through the hole there. And now you can go ahead and bolt down the radiator and put it back together. 
And here is a tip as you are taking apart your Model A regarding the hood. So while you get the hood off, it's not required, but it's a great time to clean and wax your hood. You'll have great access to the underside of the hood that normally you can't get to. So definitely, if you get a chance while you're taking apart your Model A radiator, as you have the hood off, just go ahead and clean it and wax it while you're there. And that'll save you a lot of time later.